it's the end of 2020. So let's take a moment and go back through the best, but definitely the worst PC building moments for us in terms of GPUs, CPUs, and industry trends. It's gonna be a lot of fun coming up right now. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Today we're gonna to do something kind of fun. We're gonna take a look back at the year in review, 2020. Started off with a bang, ended in a really weird place. Of course, here at PC Builder, we're focused on getting you the best price to performance for your builds. So if that's something that you're excited about, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified when we go live. And as always, if you get some enjoyment or just have some fun in this video, please remember to give it a like. It really helps out a lot. Well, with that, let's jump into it. All right, let's start off with the highs of 2020. And it really got off to a banging year with the absolute best budget gaming CPU to come out. Heck, best budget CPU period to come out, which is the AMD Ryzen 5 1600. This was a processor for $85 when it launched in, in uh, actually late last year, but really got notoriety early this year. For only $85, you got six cores, 12 threads. It's effectively a Ryzen 2600 clone that came out, but for $85 at the time, it completely took the market by storm and replaced any of the other processors, the Athlon 3000G, uh, even the 2600 that was selling for about $115, anything Intel had it, blew it completely out of the water in terms of price to performance. This processor launched with very, very little fanfare from AMD whatsoever. In fact, they basically stealth launched it. And it lasted at that $85 price right up through the, the great conundrum of 2020, all the way into the summer before AMD effectively has priced this thing out as they rolled out other chips, particularly the Ryzen 3 3100. You can still though, right now, the, as I'm recording this, the 3100 is still out of stock and this is still the best budget CPU right now at $150. Would I buy at $150? I mean, there's nothing else on the market right now unless you wanna go Intel, you could do that. But if you want Ryzen right now at the end of 2020 and you wanna build something, this is still your best bet. And that kind of blows my mind after this thing evaporated off the scene. It's no longer 85, still a decent value. And now we jump over to the absolute worst in terms of PC building, gaming, CPU of 2020, and that is the AMD Ryzen 3 3300X. Why is it the worst? Because it's basically one step above vaporware. Yes, I guess some CPUs were actually released back in May when it originally quote unquote launched, but this is as close as most people ever got to the CPU. At retailing for about $120, that's supposedly what it was gonna retail for, this was supposed to be an amazing four core, eight thread beast of a processor with all the cores on the same CCX. It was, it you know, in benchmarks, it did phenomenal things, the benchmarks for CPUs that were sent out to reviewers. However, like I said, most people, this is as close as they got to it, the AMD product screen, because it has been out of stock pretty much since launch day to the point that even people who backordered it around launch day had back orders canceled. So seven months in, Nobody has seen this CPU, so to me, there's no worse CPU than one you can't actually use. Even crummy CPUs, you could actually use the thing and get some value out of it. Not many people got value out of the 3300X, so it's, to me, the absolute worst CPU for budget CPU for gaming in 2020, because it doesn't exist. Switching over to the absolute end of the spectrum, in terms of high-end gaming right now for 2020, the best CPU that you're gonna buy for gaming specifically is the Ryzen 5 5600X. Did you ever think that you would take a product out of near the bottom of the stack of a generation and say that is the best CPU for gaming? Well, that's the Ryzen 5 5600X. It's weird to me too. But this processor knocks the living snot out of Intel's 10th gen lineup, except in Red Dead Redemption 2 for some odd reason. And you don't need to buy a 5900X or a 5950X. In fact, what we've seen is that the 5600X and the 5800X, which has worse value, because all of the CPU cores, the six cores, 12 threads, are on a single CCX, 
it actually has a lot of benefits for gaming and it gets incredible frame rates. I've heard people say, oh, you can't buy a 5600X if you're gonna get a 3080 or a 3090. Why not? Why not? Why overspend for your CPU if all you're doing is gaming? This is perfect for you. And at $300, why spend more than that on a CPU for gaming if you don't have to? Yeah, if you wanna do CAD or high-end video editing, get something else, but for gaming, Ryzen 5 5600X, and at the end of 2020, they are now coming back in stock much more regularly in drops at Newegg and others. If you are having a hard time getting these parts, check out the video I recent, re recently released on how to beat the bots and get some of these products. It might help you out. Now let's switch over to the absolute worst high-end gaming processor of 2020, the Intel i9-10900K, which MSRP's you know, supposedly for about $488, but it's really hard to find. It's been out of stock a lot. Uh, right now it's selling for $530 over at Best Buy. This is a CPU that launched kind of in the middle of the year, had a little bit of fanfare, but was really overshadowed by its uh, lesser sibling, the i5-10600K, because you could overclock the crap out of that processor and almost beat the i9 for far, far less in terms of dollars. And then of course, the Ryzen 5 5600X, the best gaming CPU that just came out, which only costs $300. Yes, availability is still coming in for that CPU. You know, really kills the i9. So this is a processor that's effectively without a home. It's been a tough year for Intel this year. Let's, let's all take a moment of silence for them. Uh, I'm sure they're doing fine, but uh, the i9 10900K is not. All right, now let's jump over to graphics cards the best budget GPUs of 2020. And believe it or not, these are GPUs that technically I don't believe launched in 2020. The first one goes to the NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super. Now the 1650 was a terrible, terrible graphics card, way overpriced for what it, what it was. So NVIDIA took it back to the shop and unlike all the other GTX and RTX cards that introduced Super lines where they just inserted upgraded memory into it, they actually completely redesigned the 1650 when they release it as the 1650 Super. Far more powerful card, and at an initial price point of about $153, this is an extraordinarily competitive product. Frankly, you could even use this beyond gaming. Uh, it's got an upgraded NVENC encoder in it, so you could even think about trying to stream on this card. Overall, fantastic value for the money. Right now at the end of 2020, they're hard to find in stock, but even at $180 or $190 compared to what else is out there, still a great value. Of course, the other card that I wanna mention in here is currently not really in stock at the end of 2020, but has been consistently in stock through the year, which is the RX 570. That's right, a three-year-old Polaris graphics card, still one of the best value budget GPUs maybe of all time at this point, but definitely even at the end of 2020, if you wanna buy one off of eBay, they still go for about 90 to $100 that typically include shipping. But even if you spend 110, given the current state of the market right now for CPU part, uh, excuse me, for uh, PC parts in general, and the terrible state that the graphics card market is in, this is a phenomenal value. Now you can still buy them new for about $189, but for that you wanna buy a GTX 1650 Super. However, if you're just looking to buy something at the budget end, $110 plus eight bucks to ship, a used RX 570 four gigabyte model, this will get you into just about any game you want, playing at medium to high details, 60 frames a second for 1080p. It's a phenomenal value and that's why it is along with the GTX 1650 Super, the best budget GPU of the year. So now let's go to the absolute worst graphics card in terms of price to performance at the budget level. And that was the AMD Radeon RX 5500 XT. Yes, I know it technically debuted in at the end of December in 2019, but really the card didn't come into stock until earlier in 2020. This was gonna be the successor to the RX 570, RX 580, amazing performance at a very, very reasonable discount price. Never lived up to that. The 5700 and 5700 XT, which uh, came before this, were phenomenal successes. And the 5600 XT, as we'll see in a second, started off rocky, but was a success. The 5500 XT though, 
at an MSRP of $180, and often you couldn't even find it for that. They were selling for more than that, especially the board partner cards. It just never could crack uh, the, the, the value lineup. So we're looking towards 2021, and I'm sure AMD is getting ready to launch a 6500 XT. Hopefully they do much better because this one was a real stinker. So that brings us to the best mid-range graphics card for gaming of 2020. And that is, without a doubt, I think, although it had a very rocky beginning and it could have easily turned out to be the worst, the AMD Radeon RX 5600 XT. This card directly competed with not just the GTX 1660 Ti, which is originally how AMD had positioned it, but ended up competing with the RTX 2060. And despite AMD's claims about its amazing 1080p performance, it actually had pretty good 1440p performance as well. For only $270-ish when it came in, again, had BIOS issues, AMD messed with the power limits at first, and then the, the board partners had, had to really adjust for that. Could have easily been the worst, like I said. At the end of 2020, before everything exploded around Black Friday and everything sold out, you could get one of these for only $220, which is less than the cost of a, a GTX 1660 Super, which this card completely destroys that one. So again, for me, if this card comes back in stock at that level, unless AMD and Nvidia are gonna release cards down into the 200 level soon, this is still a fantastic buy and definitely the best mid-range graphics card of 2020. So that brings us to the absolute worst mid-range graphics card, gaming graphics card of 2020, and that is the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I taking time to dunk on for 2020 a card that actually came out in February of 2019? Well, the simple answer to that is that in very, very late 2019, Nvidia actually came out with the GTX 1660 Super which had identical performance to the TI card, but for 40, 30 to 40 bucks less. But they continued to produce and sell the TI card. So they're basically producing a product that was shortchanging consumers and they didn't get rid of it. So to me, yeah, a, a, a product that costs as much as an RX 5600 XT with you know far less performance than something that NVIDIA was selling itself and its board partners were selling itself for 30 or 40 bucks less. Yes, terrible value, terrible card, but people kept buying it because the product line is confusing. So absolute worst GPU mid-range for gaming in 2020 in terms of price or performance. So what does a crazy 2020 bring us in terms of best industry trends? Competition. AMD, LeapFrog Intel, once again, AMD and Intel are slugging it out for the gaming crown. That's fantastic. AMD is currently in the lead. AMD also jumped back into the high end of the GPU market, and they're giving NVIDIA real competition. They're not yet fighting it out in terms of production workloads. NVIDIA still has a virtual monopoly there. Hopefully that'll change as well soon. Maybe not this year, but maybe next year. But what we're seeing is competition. Competition is good for consumers. It's good for you. It's good for me. It doesn't help anybody to be fanboys or fangirls of any particular company because those companies just want to make money. They've got their own self-interest. As consumers, we have our self-interest, and our self-interest is to get the best stuff for the cheapest price in a fair market where we have access to all the information as well, which is fantastic when all the companies are competing against each other and that should continue into 2021, especially as Intel looks to enter the GPU market and come back with their Rocket Lake, Rocket Lake CPUs. And NVIDIA and AMD continue to release now lower-end GPUs in their RX 6000 series for AMD and the NVIDIA 3000 series, RTX, or probably GTX 3000 series, coming early in the year. So phenomenal trend for consumers. I hope you had a lot of fun in this video. If you did, absolutely give it a like. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon. That way you get notified when we go live. Have a happy holidays, happy the rest of the year, and I'll catch you on the next one.